In previous episodes of Bay Area Bountiful, we've talked about rivers and streams, about where our drinking water comes from, and about groundwater. Now we're gonna look at how all those things are parts of a larger system, a watershed. What is a watershed? The definition of a watershed is an area of land that where water drains under it and over the surface of it all flows to a single point. Rain falls on the landscape, and when it falls on a ridge, if it goes one way, it's in one watershed. If it goes the other way, it's in another. It erodes the weak rock and the dirt, and all that water collects in the low spots following gravity and digs out channels we call rivers. All rivers drain to a single point, as I said. In 99% of the cases, that's the ocean or a sea or somewhere. And then in a few cases, like Great Salt Lake, a lot of the water falling on the Wasatch Mountains outside of Salt Lake drains into a terminal lake. There's no off-ramp to or exit ramp to the ocean there. And to kind of get a mind's eye picture of what a watershed looks like, it's helpful to think of the you know, the kid stick drawing of a tree where you have a main trunk and branches, that very much is what a watershed looks like, with the small branches being little gullies and creeks, and that going into bigger branches being the larger creeks or small rivers, uh, and then on into the trunk, which is usually your main stem river. Watersheds can be as small as an inland lake or a single county, or they can be thousands of square miles, areas spanning multiple states and containing a variety of water features. Now that we're familiar with what a watershed usually looks like, let's see how all this fits into a local example, the Russian River Watershed. The Russian River Watershed is 1,485 square miles of land, 110 to 120 miles of river, containing 238 streams and creeks. The Russian River is such an important resource for our community, and it flows up from the Potter Valley Redwood area in Mendocino County down all the way through the Alexander Valley, coming in and takes a loop out to the, the community of Jenner on the coast. That whole segment is what we have to take care of. And you have sub watersheds like Mark West or Dry Creek or Green Valley. These are areas that capture water through the creeks and tributaries to the Russian River. Outside the Russian River watershed in Sonoma County, you have two other large watersheds that we need to care for, which is the Petaluma watershed and the Sonoma Valley watersheds that flow into San Francisco Bay. But clearly, the Russian River is what defines this region. Looking at the geology and topography of our area helps us understand how this watershed formed. The Russian River drains into the ocean at Goat Rock Beach in Jenner, California. Here behind me, we have the mouth of the Russian River. The geology around the Jenner area, um, we're standing here at Goat Rock State Park and Goat Rock is just to our south. The river is where it is today because that was the weakest point in the geology where the water had the easiest time eroding the land and finding its way to the ocean. Um, here in California, earthquake faults are a major shaper of watersheds. Uh, the Russian River is 110, 120 miles long, depending on who you ask. And for about 80 miles of that, it flows north-south. And the reason it does that is those are basically valleys that are being pulled apart by earthquake faults. And so the water following gravity ends up in the bottom of those valleys, um, which has shaped its direction. And all that uh, used to flow to the San Francisco Bay millennia ago. And the water found a weak spot between Forestville on the other side of the ridges here and Jenner and decided to make a uh, westward turn in Forestville and find its way to the ocean. And again, that was something that was influenced by geology, uh, water eroding the softest material it can find. Here where the water meets the ocean, often you have features like the sandbar in the background here, which actually form an estuary, an area of slow water. This is a critical landscape feature which provides nursery habitat for both freshwater and marine aquatic species. And one of the best examples of an estuary in the West Coast is the San Francisco Bay. What role does groundwater play in a watershed? A lot of people think of rivers as the place where water flows, and it's not just the only place where water flows. 
Underneath the Russian River, underneath the Sacramento River, there's subterranean streams, and there's also basins where we have underground, essentially upside down lakes, um, and that's called groundwater. And a lot of times water, as it hits the hills, instead of coming down over the surface, it will find a crack in the ground or the rocks, seep underground, but it will continue to flow via gravity towards that river at the bottom of the valley. And that process can take days, it can take weeks, it can take decades. Um, and essentially one of our biggest reservoirs of water is actually under our feet. You know, when we think about climate change and think about droughts and the effect they'll have on dams and things like that, groundwater, that water under our feet is gonna become much more important. We are connected to our watershed in so many ways. It's important to understand how individual and systemic actions affect the watershed we rely on. As water managers, we have to be able to account for extremes. Flooding, multi-year drought, and everything in between. It's very important that we do our part to be able to respond to this challenge of climate change. We have systems in place that need to become more resilient and individuals have to do their part to make sure they're using our resources wisely. And I think the next generation is going to have to step up even further and do their part to make sure that they are being as wise stewards as possible of this wonderful natural resource called the Russian River and all the creeks and tributaries that flow into that system. The health of the watershed is the health of our water supply. And the biggest message we have today is that uh, climate change, its biggest manifestation in this state will be the lack of water. So what water we have in a place like California is very precious, so taking care of it is critical, and that all begins with learning what a watershed is, your place in the watershed, and how you affect the health of that place.